Why the F slash A 18 Hornet stands the test of time against new fighters. In the age of stealth, you'd be forgiven for thinking the skies belong to the sleek, almost invisible shapes of the F-22 and F-35. We're constantly told the future of air combat is low observable, a world where the biggest threat is the one you can't see. So, what if I told you that one of the most formidable and relied upon aircraft in the world today is a design that's over 40 years old? An aircraft that is proudly and very obviously not a stealth fighter. The F-A-18 Hornet has a secret to its long life, and it's a story of brilliant design, ruthless evolution, and just a stubborn refusal to be outmatched. So today, we're going to break down how its incredible versatility, a constant stream of high-tech upgrades, and its battle-proven toughness let it go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the newest jets in the sky. We'll look at where it came from, its combat legacy, and the transformation that keeps it not just relevant, but absolutely lethal today. The problem, an aging warrior in a stealth world. To really get the Hornet's story, you first have to understand the challenge it's up against. The modern battle space is all about one thing, information, and the key to owning that information is stealth. Fifth gen fighters like the F-35 and F-22 are built around the idea of low observability. Their strange shapes and special materials are all designed to scatter and absorb radar, letting them fly deep into enemy territory and engage threats before their opponents even know they're there. These jets aren't just fighters, they're flying data collectors. Through something called sensor fusion, they pull in tons of information from their own powerful radars, infrared sensors, and electronic warfare gear, and mix it with data from satellite ships and other friendly forces. This creates a clear, almost godlike picture of the battlefield for pilot. In theory, that makes any older, non-stealthy plane a sitting duck, a loud, visible target in a quiet game of hide-and-seek. And a fourth-generation fighter like the F-A-18, with its classic shape and weapons hanging off the wings, lights up a radar screen. By today's standards, it's easy to spot. So this raises a huge question that military planners have had to answer. In an age where billions are spent on invisibility, why does the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps keep pouring billions more into this old, non-stealthy design? The answer isn't simple, and it starts not with stealth, but with a game-changing idea that turned naval aviation on its head. The genesis of a legend, the Hornet's Nest. To find out where the F-A-18 came from, you have to go back to the years after the Vietnam War. That conflict was a tough lesson that having too many different, specialized aircraft was a logistical nightmare. The U.S. Navy was operating a complicated and very expensive fleet. You had the legendary F-14 Tomcat, an amazing interceptor built to take out Soviet bombers from hundreds of miles away. But the Tomcat was incredibly expensive to buy, fly, and fix. And since it was so specialized, you still needed other planes for other jobs like the A-7 Corsair II for ground attack. The Navy needed a new way of thinking. It needed one plane that could do it all. It needed a workhorse. The answer actually came from a losing design in an Air Force competition. In the lightweight fighter program, the YF-16 went up against the Northrop YF-17. The Air Force picked the YF-16, which became the F-16 Fighting Falcon. But the Navy saw a huge potential in a runner-up. The YF-17's twin-engine design was perfect for the added safety needed when flying over open ocean, and its frame looked tough enough to handle the controlled chaos of carrier landings. McDonnell Douglas was brought in to turn the YF-17 into a carrier fighter, and they didn't just tweak it. They gave a whole new identity. From day one, it was designed to be a true multi-role machine. That idea was built right into its name, F-18. F for fighter, A for attack. It was the first tactical jet to ever get that dual designation, basically a mission statement in its name. It was built to launch from a carrier, escort other planes, defend the fleet from enemy jets, and then, with just a flip of the switch, become an attack plane and drop bombs on ground targets. This was a revolutionary idea. It meant one aircraft could replace at least two different types, making life way simpler for the maintenance crews, supply chains, and pilots on a carrier. The core of its dominance unparalleled versatility. That F-A name wasn't just good marketing. It was backed up by technology that was way ahead of its time. 
The F A 18 was the first tactical jet with fully digital, triple redundant fly by wire system. This got rid of the heavy, complex network of cables and pulleys and replaced them with electronic signals. A computer reads the pilot's inputs and moves the control surfaces perfectly. This made the Hornet incredibly nimble and surprisingly easy to fly, which freed up the pilot's brain power to focus on the mission, not just wrestling with the controls. The revolution continued inside the cockpit. Instead of a wall of old-school steam gauges, Hornet pilots got multifunction displays. These screens would be changed on the fly to show flight data, weapons, radar, or maps. This was the real key to its do-it-all ability. A pilot could be scanning the sky for enemy fighters and then, in a heartbeat, switch their screen to a view of the ground, pick out a target, and drop a smart bomb. It was a seamless switch between roles that made the F A 18 so valuable. All this flexibility was built on a rock solid, reliable platform. The twin engines weren't just for safety, they gave it plenty of power and redundancy. Its airframe and landing gear were built to take the punishment of what is essentially a control crash on every single carrier landing. This mix of advanced digital systems, multi-role design, and carrier-grade toughness created a jet that could be sent out to do pretty much anything you could ask of it. Fighter escort, fleet defense, taking out enemy air defenses, air-to-ground strikes, close air support, and reconnaissance. It was and still is the ultimate jack-of-all-trades. Battle proven, forge in combat, a great design is one thing on paper, but only proves its worth in combat. The F A 18 didn't wait long. During Operation Desert Storm in 1991, the Hornet showed everyone what multi role really meant. In a now famous mission, two F divided by a minus 18S were on their way to bomb an Iraqi airfield when they got word of two hostile Iraqi MiG 21s. The Hornet pilots engaged, shot down both MiGs, and then, without missing a beat, went right back to their original mission and dropped their bombs on target. It was the ultimate proof of concept. They did a fighter and an attack mission in the same flight, perfectly living up to the F A in their name. Throughout the 90s and 2000s, the Hornet was the backbone of U.S. naval aviation, serving over the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Iraq. But its most telling performance might be what's happening right now. In the tense environment of the Red Sea from 2023 to 2024, F divided by a minus 18S from the carrier USS Dwight D, Eisenhower have been on the front lines, defending ships from a new kind of threat, swarms of attack drones and anti-ship missiles. Pilots on the scene have praised the jet's flexibility and readiness in this constantly changing fight. In these operations, Super Hornets have been seen loaded for bear in a full air-to-air -air setup carrying as many as nine air-to-air -air missiles to counter drones, a highly specialized loadout that shows just how adaptable it is. On the very same deployment, those same jets have been reconfigured for strike missions, electronic warfare, and even as flying gas stations to refuel other planes. This real-world performance against new, unpredictable threats shows just how solid the Hornet's original design really was. Coming up, we're going to get into the high-tech upgrades that have turned this 40-year-old airframe into a weapon that can challenge even fifth-generation opponents. If you're enjoying this breakdown of military tech, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss our future deep dives. And let us know in the comments what other legendary aircraft deserves this kind of analysis. The evolution from Hornet to Super Hornet by the 1990s the Navy knew the Hornet was a winner, but there was always room for improvement. The original F A 18, what we now call the Legacy Hornet, had one main drawback its range. It just couldn't fly as far or carry as much gear as the bigger planes it replaced, like the A 6 Intruder. The solution wasn't to start from scratch, but to evolve the plane they already had. The result was the F divided by minus 18 E divided by F Super Hornet. Now, Calling the Super Hornet an upgrade is a massive understatement. It's basically a new aircraft that just happens to share a name and a similar shape with the original. The airframe was stretched out and blown up by about 20%, which made room for 33% more internal fuel. That one change massively increased its mission range and endurance, fixing the Legacy Hornet's biggest weakness. The bigger frame was powered by new, brawnier General Electric F414 engines, giving it 35% more thrust. 
it got more weapon stations, so it could carry a heavier and wider variety of bombs and missiles. And one of the most critical upgrades was its bring back capability. Carrier jets often have to land with unspent and very expensive smart bombs. The Super Hornet was designed to land back on the ship, carrying over 9,000 pounds of unspent weapons and fuel, a huge increase over the original and a massive money saver. Hitting the fleet in the early 2000s, the Super Hornet was bigger, more powerful, and had much longer legs. It was a workhorse Hornet, supersized. The secret weapon, relentless modernization, the Block 3 era, even with the Super Hornet's improvements, the rise of 5th Gen fighters created a new problem. So, the answer once again was not to replace it, but to modernize it. This brings us to the ultimate version of the jet flying today, the Block 3 Super Hornet. And this is really the secret to how it stays so dominant. First up is the Enslash APG-79 ASA radar. Think of old radars like a flashlight beam you have to physically point at something. An ASA radar is more like a showerhead, with hundreds of tiny transmitters that can track a huge number of targets in the air and on the ground, all at once, with no moving parts. It's more powerful, harder to jam, and less likely to be detected by the enemy. It gives the Super Hornet pilot a massive leap in situational awareness. The second upgrade is a direct answer to the stealth problem, the infrared search and track, or IRSD system. This is a passive sensor, meaning it doesn't emit any energy. It just sits there, looking for the heat signatures of other aircraft. Stealth fighters are designed to beat radar, but they can't hide their engine heat. The IRSD lets a Block 3 Super Hornet spot and track even stealthy jets from a long way off without ever turning on its own radar. It's a powerful counter stealth tool. To stretch its legs and make it sneakier, the Block 3 can carry conformal fuel tanks. These tanks fit snugly against the plane's body, carrying 3,500 pounds of extra fuel without the huge drag and radar signature of old-school drop tanks. This pushes the Super Hornet's combat range out even further, putting it closer to what an F-35 can do on internal fuel alone. Inside the cockpit, the pilot gets a giant new touchscreen called a large area display. This replaces the cluttered, smaller screens with one customizable, panoramic view of the battlefield, pulling together data from all the plane's sensors into one clean picture. Driving all this is a new supercomputer and a high-speed data link called TTNT, which lets the Block 3 share a massive amount of data instantly with other aircraft, like F-35s, E-2D Hawkeye command planes, and even drones. Finally, the airframes themselves are being rebuilt through a service life modification program, strengthening their structures to extend their flying life from 6,000 to 10,000 hours. This makes sure these modernized jets will be the core of the Navy's carrier air wings for decades to come. And it's not just the Navy. The Marine Corps is also busy upgrading its older F divided by a minus 18S with ASA radars and new gear, keeping the whole Hornet family dangerous. The verdict why it still dominates. So, how does a 40-year-old design really hold its own against brand new fighters? The answer is that it's not trying to be a fifth generation fighter. It's designed to be the perfect partner to one. The modern US Navy air wing runs on a high-low mix. The F-35C is the high-end stealthy quarterback. It uses its invisibility and incredible sensors to push deep into enemy airspace find threats, and take out the most dangerous targets. The Block 3 Super Hornet is a low-end workhorse, but don't let that term fool you. It follows the F-35 into the now safer airspace and acts as a massively capable weapons truck and problem solver. With its advanced networking, an F-35 can spot a target and silently feed the location to a Super Hornet, which can then launch its own missiles from a safe distance. The Super Hornet can simply carry a lot more bombs and missiles on its external pylons, making it the perfect jet to overwhelm enemy defenses after the F-35 has kicked down the door. That teamwork is a key. The F-A-18's versatility and raw reliability mean it can fly more missions, stay in the air longer, and do a wider variety of jobs at a much lower cost than its stealthy teammates. While the U.S. Navy will stop buying new Super Hornets around 2027, the massive Block 3 upgrade program means hundreds of these jets will stay in the fleet, likely well into the 2040s. They aren't a temporary fix. 
They are a critical part of the Navy's future, working right alongside the F-35 and the next generation of unmanned aircraft. The story of the F-A-18 Hornet is just a masterclass in smart aircraft design. It started with a game-changing idea, build one jet for maximum versatility. That solid foundation allowed it to be reborn as the bigger, more powerful Super Hornet. And now, through non-stop modernization, it's been transformed into Block 3, a networked, sensor-packed, and incredibly deadly 4th Gen Plus fighter. The Hornet stands the test of time not despite its age, but because its core design was so good and so adaptable that it could be constantly reforged to meet new threats. It isn't a stealth fighter, but it's a smart fighter, a tough fighter, and a proven winner in combat. As it continues to serve as the backbone of U.S. naval aviation from carrier decks all over the world, the Hornet remains a dominant force. Proof that in air combat, evolution can be just as powerful as revolution. What are your thoughts on the F-A 18's incredible legacy and its future? Do we miss any key details that make this plane so special? Let us know what you think down in the comments. And for more deep dives into the legendary machines of war, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching.